My name is Allison Brooks and I'm a plan work specialist for the horticulture services team. We have plants collected from every single continent except for Antarctica. Well over about 3,500 different species across all the four parks and all of our resort areas. Disney is all about entertainment, it's all about the storytelling, so the plants help tell that story too. All the plants are themed for a particular location that they're at. World Showcase of Epcot is excellent because we were actually designing each one of those 11 countries around World Showcase. We'll try to find plant material that is native to each one of those countries. And then we also have to work within a color scheme. So we want hot, bright colors over at Mexico. So you'll do like a lot of pinks and oranges and reds. And then in like Norway, kind of opposite. You want more pastels or you want whites and blues at, during the winter months. Of course, there's a lot of plants that won't grow here in Florida weather. So now we all look for plant material that we call our look-alikes. That means that they're gonna look, uh, they may be the same genus, but a different species, something that'll grow here in Florida, or they're just gonna have they'll take on the same sort of look of something you would find growing in those countries. We've had Woody and we've had Buzz since we debuted Toy Story 3. And then this year to go along with Toy Story 4, we introduced Bo Peep and her sheep creating a sphagnum topiary like the Toy Story set. From start to getting it on show to the guests is probably a one year process to get it planted up irrigated and that sort of thing. But it is a weekly maintenance of just making sure everything's pruned back, well watered. But if something dies out on it, it's very easy to maintain because we can just go in, pull out whatever doesn't look good and replace it that plant material. We spend a lot of time in here where the guests are not here. So most of our really kind of, what I always say, the loud, messy jobs are taking place overnight. So we have to bring in a lot of our own portable lights. Um, we get to drive around all over the place. And you know, we're, we're making magic happen overnight, we're changing out flower beds. But probably the best part is right before park opening and when you transition into that getting cleaned up and then the, the music comes on and the fountains start going and different things like that and just that magical transition as we get ready for the guests to come back in for the day. And then our cleaner jobs, so where we maybe just are going to go out and change a few plants here and there, maybe do a little deadheading. Um, weeding, we'll do that when the guests are here where we just have a little wagon and go around with our little pruners and that sort of thing. We always try to keep up with all the different um, horticultural publications out there, see what the trends are. Uh, that's, you know, if we keep on track of what the, the horticulture gardening trends are doing, like what homeowners are wanting to see in their yards, like that will play a lot into what we do for the Flower and Garden Festival and the types of gardens that we may showcase to our guests. If people come by and they have questions about the plants that they see, they can email us at www.disney.gardener at disney.com and we will answer any questions. I get a lot of just like, you know, what's this plant? And sometimes it's gonna be like the hot plant of the festival or the hot plant of the whatever season it may be, but normally it's just like identifying a lot of plants. <laughs>